Hello friends, in today's video we're going to be discussing a very interesting topic regarding minimal APIs versus controller based APIs. I came across this thread on Reddit a couple of days ago and I thought I'd share it with you and give you my thoughts. If you'd like to learn more about .NET, AWS or Azure, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really did help the channel. Now, let's jump into it. So, this is the post that I came across over the last few days, which is controllers versus minimal API, which one do you prefer? And this is a very interesting topic because a lot of people are still having conversation about which is better, either traditional controllers or the newer minimal APIs. And from this thread, there's a lot of people who gave all of the different opinions on them. But uh, through this thread, there is one particular response, which is going to be from an ASP.NET Core team member, Safia, which basically mentioned that complexity is a very subjective ma marker. And this is very true. So for you, what you can consider to be complex, someone else might consider simple and vice versa. Complexity also plays a crucial role on what type of project that you are trying to build and how big is that project and how is it going to be sustained on the long run. So if you're building a one stop, uh, for example, a very simple application or you're building a small application that's going to be having a lifetime for, I don't know, for a few months or a year, it's different than a project that you're trying to maintain for like decades to come. And this is going to be the way you're going to be actually approaching this. And I would like to highlight that this level of complexity will play a crucial role in what type of solution that you'd like to implement. So if you want to go with a controller based API or you're going to go with a minimal API pattern. My thoughts on this is if you're trying to build an application which you're going to be using a lot of the foundation features that ASP.NET Core provides, I would say go with the controllers because the controller base has a lot of different functionalities that the minimal APIs don't really have. Although with .NET 9, this is going to change where a lot of the new features is going to come to minimal APIs and a lot of the features from minimal APIs will come to controller base. So this argument will not really make sense on that long run. But until we see that in action and we see the action and final release candidate of that framework, this is the opinion that I'm sticking with. And if we take a look here, we can see that even uh, Safia said that the minimum API is simply the improved responsibility and onboarding of the framework. And this is really true. So minimum API came in a way where it actually allows people who have worked with Node.js before or other types of JavaScript framework who want to get the uh, .NET uh, train, they will be able to create very simple APIs within a single page rather than having to go through the controller based APIs where they had to do a lot of uh, wiring and they have to do with a lot of like different startup configuration etc etc minimal api came that it will facilitate the onboarding of new developers into the framework and it will help them get started and find their way through the framework much more easier we're going to be seeing the difference between these two and we're going to be seeing that at least how the different templates is going to differ between these two and even in this response here we can still see that minimal API is still missing some important things like model validation, etc., and much more other things. And trying to see which one is gonna fit for you, it's gonna be based on what are the needs that you are trying to achieve and what are the problems that you are trying to solve. And this this is not the only post, and this topic has been trending for a while now. Even if we go for almost a year ago, that's there's another question which is controller versus minimal APIs and we can see even here like David Fowler himself has actually commented on this post and basically said that the way that minimal API came into place is basically to break down the full MVC monolith that was part of the .NET framework and basically he emphasized here how much minimal APIs is much more faster than the traditional controller based because of that pay for play model that they have embedded into the minimal APIs functionalities. And as we can see here from the post, and as we can see from the post here that David says, even within .NET 9, there's gonna be a big, uh, the big features between the two framework or the gaps between the feature between the two framework will be gone. And this is, uh, and this is really gonna be what we're gonna be waiting to see when the .NET 9 is gonna be released um, this month, next month. And this will play a crucial role into seeing what's going to be the main differentiator between controllers and minimal APIs and when are we going to be using each because of those two main fit functionalities or base two features are basically now have the same functionality in place. It's going to make it really harder and it's going to go down to the 
capabilities of how do you want to structure your code? How are you going to be able to organize your, your application? What is the structure that you are trying to follow? Do you want to rewrite uh, some of the overhead that the API have in the inside your minimum APIs, or do you want to go a very simplistic way? I don't want a simplistic way. Simplistic is very subjective here. Or you want to go the way where basically minimal API takes everything and implement it. And basically, David also shares this screenshot where basically highlight the different ways where you can actually see. So this is if you want to create a controller, as you can see, it's very class-based, object-oriented, where you have to inherit from the controller base, initialize the constructor, and then you can actually have your endpoint. On the other side, when you're having minimal APIs, you can see it's much more easier. And within a few lines of code, you have everything already injected into it, and you can actually call whatever service you want, and you're able to get the data back. So we can see here the level of flexibility that minimal APIs will give opposite to controller base. But again, controller base will give you much more structure in your code, and it will all it will all depend on what you're trying to achieve. So I'm gonna open my terminal right now, and inside my terminal now I'm gonna create two projects. One of them is gonna be minimal API, and the other one is gonna be controller based and we're going to be seeing the main difference so i'm going to put .NET, new web api and it's going to be the minimal one i'm going to give it a simple or minimal dot api and now it's going to create this for me and i'm going to put this one as controller dot api and i'm going to give this the flag as going to be controllers so i'm going to put dash controllers so now this is going to be created and i'm going to open this inside my visual studio code Okay, so now I have the two projects open. On the left hand side here I have my minimal APIs, on the right hand side here I have my controllers. And directly from the project itself we can see there's a lot of different structures. So the minimal APIs, all we have here is basically my app settings, which is going to be my main configuration for it, my program.cs and my CS project and my HTTP. We don't really care about the HTTP right now, I can remove it. We have my CS project where all of my packages will be stored and it's going to have the main configuration for that minimal API, the framework version and the, and the packages. And I'm going to have my program.cs. Inside my program.cs, I'm going to have all of my all of my code and logic for my web API. On the other hand, inside my controller based, first of all, I have my program.cs, again, similar to the minimal API, but it has much less, it has way less information in it. And it all, I also have a controller folder where I have my controller where I'm going to able to see the endpoint that I'm going to have and basically I can see the constructor injection and all of that that's needed in order for this to be up and running and also we can see that this controller base is going to be relying on contro controller class will be relying on controller base in order for it to run so we can see here we're still following the object oriented model in order for this to work so let's open up the program.cs here and you can see the full application and I'm going to first of all open my program.cs and compare it so we can see here on the left hand side for the minimal API, I have everything here that I need. This is going to be the main part of it, which allow me to run my web API. And this is going to be the main thing where I'm creating a web builder, I'm attaching Swagger to it, and then I'm building it and basically uh, for enforcing HTTPS. And on the bottom here, what I have is I have my endpoints, which is going to be similar to the other one that I have on the right hand side, where I have a single get endpoint where everything is embedded into it. And I have here the ability to run my application after I have defined my endpoint. And here we can we can see we have a record. So within like maybe 44 lines of code, I have a full web API up and running. On the right hand side, it's a bit different, where basically, first of all, I need to also create a web application. I need to create it. But then here you can see I'm injecting controllers into the DI container, which basically here I'm telling my .NET framework that the, it's, this application is going to be controller based and it's going to be basically injecting all of the services that's going to be utilized for the .NET controllers. Once that is done, we can see that again, similarly, we're attaching Swagger. And then from here, basically, we're adding a different layers of authorization, similar to HTTPS, but also we are adding authorization and we are mapping controllers and then we are running it. But where all, this, all of the logic is actually happening, the logic is the, it's being stored inside our controllers here. And within our controllers, we can see here that we are still inheriting from controller base in order for us to have access to all of the API stuff that we need and we are using constructor to inject our loggers and if here is gonna anything that has to do with the i container we're gonna be utilizing constructor in order for us to initialize it on the other hand here we can just inject it inside our i would say lambda implementation and we'll be able to use it inside our 
get endpoint inside our minimal API. But here we have to initialize the constructor and then we are able to actually use it inside our endpoint. So we can see here that there's a lot of more ceremonies inside our controller based approach. But from this simple example, you can see the level of organization is completely different. The program.cs here or the minimal API here is much more smaller, more way more easier for anyone to get started with, specifically if they are a new to .NET. And there's a really important feature that minimal API has that controller-based API doesn't have, which is going to be AOT, ahead of time compilation. And basically, this ahead of time compilation is going to play a major role in speeding up your application. So if you're really looking for something which is going to be really fast, really snappy, minimal API is still the only way to go because of the AOT capabilities, while controller-based API, that it's not the case, it will not give you. Maybe it's coming within .NET 9. Uh, it's not been uh, officially released yet, so we, don't, we cannot really say, but this is the main thing. So as a quick summary on this video, I don't wanna say minimal API is better, controller-based API is better. Both of them are very valid options. Both of them still do the job. Both of them are there for a reason. But what, what I would say is, if someone is starting to learn .NET and you're really interested in, start with minimal APIs. It will give you a good grasp about it. If someone wants to have a long-term vision for their project, someone wants to structure it in a way where they will be able to build on top of feature, have better organization of the source code, delegate some of the organization matter to the framework itself rather than you have to create it or reinvent the wheel yourself, I would say go with a, with a controller-based approach. At the end of the day, both of them are able to create APIs, both of them are able to connect to databases, both of them are able to execute the logic that you do. It all depends on preferences and how much do you care for speed and how much do you care for organization. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please like, share and subscribe. It really helps the channel. If you have any questions and if you have your own opinions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. At the end, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.